Good afternoon, everyone. So I've brought this fantastic opening slide, which, which actually has photographs that some of our students took, primarily to distract you from the idea that you might have been expecting a grander presence based on my name. <laughs> and so I thought I'd distract you a little bit by, with, with this. Quite seriously, though, I'm, I'm really excited to be here to tell you a little bit about our program called the Global Health Case Competition at Emory. Um, the, the couple of things to say about the, the Global Health Institute at Emory is that, as was mentioned earlier, similar to the Duke model, we actually have a, a Global Health Institute that resides outside of a medical school, outside of a public health school, and is very much a university-wide um, program and institute. And it, we were fortunate enough to have funding right from the top, from the president of the university. And it's been used in a variety of ways uh, seed grants for faculty, seed grants for students, and this particular competition I think exemplifies everything we do in its multidisciplinary nature. So there are themes that you've heard uh, earlier today, and you'll hear them again uh, in what I have to say. So this program, a lot of people don't really know what this program is, and the idea is that it's a problem-based learning experience. So the easiest way that I could describe it to you is think about um, a cross between an episode of The Apprentice and American Idol. In one week, what we do is we give students a global health case that we write that has multiple facets to it. You can't just Google a solution to this issue. Uh, it usually brings in multiple disciplinary sort of perspectives to it. And teams have to comprise of more than three disciplines to, to represent themselves in this competition. And they, they have somewhere between four and six students, and they have a week. They get a case on a Monday night, and they stand up in front of a panel of judges on a Saturday morning and present their proposal. And the best proposal wins. Nobody gets fired. It's just the idea that the best proposal wins. And so, you know, what's, what's important about this and different to the other programs you're going to hear today is, again, it goes across the university. We include undergraduates graduates from every program around the university, and we're not really focused just on medical education per se. The interdisciplinary nature of our program is kind of a big deal because the way we see it, it's exposing people who are within health and global health to business, economics, finance, law, and how each of those might have a role in global health and global health implementation, but conversely, expose those folks in finance, law, business, religion, other, other aspects of a university to global health and get them engaged. And you might actually find that some of those folks actually change their career paths to include global health. The educational objectives of what we do are a couple of things. One is that we actually get our students to think about soft skills. So for example, standing in front of a large audience and presenting your idea communicating your idea effectively in terms of what slides you might use. And a lot of this uh, happens during the course of that one day, but it also happens during the course of the week and how they prepare. On the day, we have these judges who sit there and they take it all in and then they actually give feedback to the students. And we've had some really exciting opportunities where students have sat there, listened to rather grand, a uh, grand presence of a guy who's a major um, C-level individual at a very large corporation that shall be unnamed, who basically sat there and sat with the students and said, the thing is, when you're looking all over the place, it means nothing to me. But when you look in my eyes and tell me about your proposal, I melt. And so things like that really work. And, and so students learn a lot about soft skills and presenting their work. They learn about teamwork and negotiating, especially when they come from different perspectives and how you negotiate out you know, my perspective as a student of economics versus your perspective as a student of religion versus your perspective as a student of medicine. Uh, I've already mentioned the communication aspect, but also the aspect of trying to think just beyond the theoretical. At universities, it's really easy to get wrapped up in this idea of there's a theoretical solution to everything. We f encourage our students to think about how would you actually implement this in real life, in a real life global health situation. And lastly, a couple of the judges have said to me before, you know, some students are great salespeople. They'll get up there and they'll sell a comb to a bald man. Um, 
So really, this idea of defending ideas, the students, after 15 minutes of presentation time, are required to stand there for 10 minutes and be grilled for what they're worth and be able to stand there and defend their ideas. They get exposure to global health topics within a short space of time, just a week as I mentioned. And in a sense, you can identify whether students are interested in new areas or areas that they want to bolster in terms of their future careers. The different levels of learning, there's the organizing team that works with me to do this, and this is a bunch of students. Our program is entirely student-led. We develop the cases, and students actually learn how to write a good case working with me and another faculty member. And, and what makes a good case. They learn to write again in an interdisciplinary team of how you bring in somebody who is from the Candler School of Theology, the Rollins School of Public Health, the School of Medicine, and the School of Law together, and writing a good case can be a challenge. They learn about how to develop guidelines for a competition, how to manage their budgets, and how to coordinate really large-scale events. The participants, as I've mentioned, have a number of different learning experiences one of which is that it's this short consulting experience. One is that they get to network and engage with the judges that actually sat there and critiqued them five minutes ago and have a drink with these guys. So learning to disassociate, that's another huge thing that we, that we bring to the table here. So this is somewhere, this is sort of our little history of where we've come from. Um, you see the, the picture of uh, the child with a plumpy nut uh, package in, in his mouth. That was our first case in 2009. We had a small little Emory-only event with 40 students, and we used a case of uh, undernourishment, of malnutrition in Ethiopia. And as you can see, uh, I don't know if I have a pointer, I don't, okay, so you can see that our, our enrollment has increased over the years. Um, the schools that we've involved, we went from an Emory-only competition to last year actually having one Emory-only competition where we pick, on the winner, pick out the winner that will represent Emory, and we hold actually a major event every March from now on, which has 24 teams from around the country and overseas who come along and participate in this event. These are the topics that we've dealt with so far, undernutrition, tobacco, <laughs> refugee health, obesity, health disparities, and we've managed to engage a number of judges uh, from a lot of different industries and different health agencies. So one of the things about growth is that it's both our biggest challenge and our, our biggest success. We've managed to do really well, as I've said, in growing, but that can be very challenging in terms of how we move forward. One of the biggest things is actually trying to standardize the judging. So a lot of the problems come in when you go to a competition of 24 teams, we split them up into streams of six, and the winner of each stream goes, goes against each other in a final, sort of our version of the final four. Um, the challenge, as you can imagine, is the students come complaining that, oh, this, the judges in our stream were terrible and they were really hard, and that's a challenge that we have. What we've tried to do to deal with that is try to make sure that the disciplines represented amongst the judges in each stream are at least the same. We now have a detailed briefing session for judges on how they need to judge, and we use the standardized rubric that helps them judge, as well as the fact that they're all blinded to the participants that are in front of them. Every team goes by a team number at the time. Oh, thank you. Uh, just goes by a team number and they don't go by Yale or Princeton or, or Duke. One of the other thing is how do you really evaluate the impacts on students? And we've managed to do short-term evaluations, which I'll show you in a minute, but we really haven't been able to see truthfully whether this makes impacts on careers. We have anecdotally heard of a number of students who come back and say that I was going to be a consultant for a large uh, firm that was for profit and I changed my mind and I became a development consultant. We have anecdotally had students who said, I came to graduate school at Emory because of the global health case competition. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy, but I'm not sure how I can evaluate that for everybody that goes through our competition. The other issue is managing expansion, and I mean, that comes with the growth issue. We've actually found that, you know, over the, over the years, we found that comp the schools that have their own competition and will send us their winning team for our larger national, international event do better. And so to try to help this along, we actually determined that the best way to do it is help other schools do a competition of your own. So we developed this. It's a comprehensive guide. It's newly off the press. I have 10 copies with me and we have PDF versions. 
<laughs> if you're at a school that likes the idea of a global health case competition, take one of these. And you'll hear in this that you could do this from anywhere between $5,000 for a low budget version, and you could do this up to $25,000 for a fancier version. Um, so worth, worth thinking about. This is just quickly to show you a little bit about the evaluations of what our students have said to us. In terms of the disciplines represented, I think you'll appreciate um, this idea that it's easy to get, to get the public health students engaged, it's easy to get the medical students engaged in this sort of thing, but we're actually doing quite a good job of getting law students and business students to come and engage in global health. Here's something about what your team learned and what did they really involve in, th in their thinking about how to implement things in global health. And you know, these are kind of obvious to us, but not to students. And it's really heartening to see that a lot of them thought about which population they're gonna work in, how their budget is actually gonna be arranged to do this, and whether they're gonna have a monitoring and evaluation plan. Lastly, this idea of what did you really take away? What was the value of a global health competition for you? And I think very heartening for us to see that folks learned from their peers. They learned from their teammates. Uh, they found that the real world experience of having to stand up there, present your ideas and defend them was really great for students. And the soft skills are paying off potentially down the line. These are some qualitative things people say that they loved the experience, that they even liked it when they didn't know anybody in their team, when they were just cobbled together with somebody else and they got to know them over the course of a week. And this was lovely in that somebody said, when you've been to a university that puts on a great show, it makes you want to go back to your university and put on a similar show. Come get one, folks. <laughs> All right, so this is just the last slide to show you this is our event for this year. Perfect timing because registration is open currently. It's first come, first served. We're going to take the first 23 teams, and then we'll have an Emory team as our 24th. Uh, so please get in there. Please register. There are some flyers at the table over there. And as I mentioned, I have the, um, the guide to how you can do your own. Uh, so thank you very much for your time, and I'd be happy to answer questions later. <laughs>